Well, hello, good morning, good afternoon, good evening, everyone. How are we? Today, we're going to do a little deep dive on a, one of y'all's favorites, Letitia South. Did you guys ever see why she lost her educator certificate? And here's a summary of the case. So this was before the South Carolina State Board of Education. Order of permanent revocation. I don't know if I said that right. The State Board of Education considered this matter on February the 9th of 2021. On March 11th of 2020, the, the chair of the State Board summarily suspended Letitia H. Stouch's South Carolina Educator Certificate. On March 11th of 2020, the, the South Carolina Department of Education sent the summary suspension order and a notice letter to Ms. Stouch regarding the possible suspension or revocation of her South Carolina Educator Certificate. The South Carolina Department of Education subsequently sent Ms. Stalk a second notice letter on December the 28th of 2020, informing her of the pending action against her educator certificate and her right to a hearing. The South Carolina Department of Education has verified Mrs. Stalk's address. Under the South Carolina Rules of Civil Procedure, Ms. Stalk has been given fair notice of constitutional due process. She has not contacted the South Carolina Department of Education to request a hearing and is now in default. After considering the evidence presented, the state board voted to permanently, permanently revoke Mrs. Stouck's educator certificate effective February 9th of 2021. Ms. Stouck holds a suspended South Carolina educator certificate and has over five years of teaching experience. Ms. Stouck's educator certificate was previously suspended by the state board from May 11th of 2016 to November 7th of 2016 due to unprofessional conduct for breach of contract. On March 11th of 2020, the State Board summarily suspended Ms. Stock's South Carolina Educator Certificate. This action was taken in response to reports was arrested on the charges of murder in the first degree, child abuse resulting in death, tampering with a deceased human body, and tampering with physical evidence. These charges stem from the disappearance of Ms. Stock's stepson. As a basis of the arrest warrants on the charges, investigators in Colorado submitted a 32-page affidavit that detailed forensic and investigative evidence to support the probable cause for the warrants. At the time of her arrest, Ms. Stauck also held an educator certificate in Colorado. On October 27th of 2020, Ms. Stauck's Colorado educator certificate was revoked after she failed, I know it says certification, was revoked after she failed to appear before the Colorado Administrative Court. Mrs. Stout's criminal charges are still pending. However, Ms. Stout has not responded to the notice letters from the South Carolina Department of Education and has not been and has not requested a hearing in this matter. The South Carolina Department of Education has considered evidence provided by law enforcement and the educator certification body in Colorado. After considering the evidence presented, the state board voted to permanently revoke Ms. Stout's educator certificate effective February 9th of 2021. The state board finds that the evidence presented by the South Carolina Department of Education supports its decision that just cause exists to permanently revoke her educator certificate issued in the name of Letitia H. Stauk effectively February 9th of 2021. I don't think it's going to matter because she's not going to out of jail, but, you know, I thought that was kind of interesting because I don't know if there was, if it, we all thought it was a rumor or not, but the fact that she had been suspended in 2016 because of her unprofessional conduct. So it sees it seems like um, she's also got a civil suit. Letitia's got a civil suit over the kosher food thing. This was dated September 22nd of 2022. Now we knew that <clears throat> we knew she wrote a letter complaining about her kosher food. I'm pretty sure I think I've got the uh, video on some of the letters she wrote. So she says that, uh, oh, and here, if you want to write her, if you want to write the prisoner, uh, here's the address right here. So this was during the pretrial. And the civil suit is against the El Paso County, which is, well, the, 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 the jail, I guess. I don't know. And the deputies that are at the jail. <laughs> all in handwritten uh, oh okay here we go claim one freedom of religion kosher violations please see attached medical neglect claim two please see attached 
Is there any formal grievance procedure at the institution in which you are confined? Yes. Did you exhaust administrative remedies? Yes. Of course I did. Claim one, general charges or general damages, restitution damages, or reliance, loss damages, monetary. What? Claim two, injunctive relief, monetary relief, policy change for well-path neglecting inmates. So, attached defendants, Trinity Ford Food Services, job title, inmate food distribution. Defendant's information, Trinity Ford Food Service, defendant for is being sued in his or her individual and or official, I like how she writes the form herself, claim one of the kosher violations. The kosher files from July 21st of February 2022, my First Amendment right was violated by means of my kosher diet. Inmates sign an agreement stating they will adhere to the policy and follow their kosher diet guidelines to avoid interruption of meals and services. During this time, I expressed several concerns of the meals not being wrapped appropriately, items that were not kosher approved being placed in our diets, and the violation of sanitation by putting kosher on open trays. I asked deputies to alert their superiors that the policy and custom by El Paso County Jail was not prohibited per the religious affiliation. Below are a list of inmate kites that followed once staff refused to contact Trinity Food Services and let administration know of the violations. So on August 18th of 2021, she was explaining to them that her food was contaminated and kosher items were on open trays. On September 4th, she reported improper kosher and contaminations with the El Paso County Jail. Oh, she was told to contact Trinity instead of the jail. <laughs> On November 19th, she explained to the staff that was using a pen marker to write K on non-kosher items that did not already have the standard approval. <gasps> These were non-kosher items and violated the signed agreement. On 11-22, a response from the jail sent to the kite kitchen again. The jail continued to ignore the customs and policy for kosher inmates and placed the blame on the co contractor, Trinity Foods. However, the contractor is contacting business in El Paso County Jail and administration failed to monitor or adjust violations. Next, during the court transport in September of 2021, November 2021, and February 2022, I advised the deputies that they were not providing kosher meals while at court and eating the sack lunches were a violation of our kosher sign policy. I also asserted my First Amendment right to each occasion and asked the jail to adhere to their policy on religious diets. After several attempts, I noticed retaliation and was not provided my kosher or my meal was delayed for hours when other kosher and non-kosher inmates had theirs. On February 12th, Deputy Stangl, a named defendant, sent in a violation of kosher to religious programs and they determined it and they terminated my meal on february 14th 2022 until Fe february 28th of 2022 i sent several kites and asked ssgis could they provide the proof and reason behind the suspension that i did not violate the agreement that in fact the jail continued to show a direct link between the policy and constitutional injury during this time, I received notification that the deputy Stangle observed me violating the diet by eating other foods. Oh. I explained to her that these purchase items on commissary were not excluded and once again asked the jail to hold a meeting or some form of hearing demonstrating that I did not adhere and that these actions were not prejudiced on behalf of Stangle. Instead, I received unjust punishment as a result of this individual who was competent and who should, showed extreme indifference, more negligence towards my First Amendment right. From February, February 14th, oh my gosh, this is 20 pages long, y'all. This woman is psycho. There should be a slot they put all her letters in, you know? just just Let's just take all of her letters and put them in a little slot, and we'll just keep them there. It could be they possibly have, and it's called a trash can. From February 14th to Fe August 14th, I was suspended by my diet, which leads to weight loss, depression, and being limited to one meal a day because of excessive commissary prices. 
commissary prices. Oh, now she's going. Okay, so now she's going after pricing. Y'all, she's going to go in there and she's going to upset the whole jail system. She's going to stand up like Norma Ray holding her sign up. Saying, kosher. Too expensive. I suffered com conflicts between myself and substantial burdens on my religious practice. Bitch, you murdered a little boy who you were held with the responsibility of taking care of. Do you really think we give a crap about your kosher and religious practices? You lost those rights, honey. It just, it look, I mean, it goes on and on. Ooh, Deputy Snipe became confrontational and abused her power while acting in official capacity. She insisted that the meal was correct, ignored my claim to the First Amendment right, and refused to serve me a proper kosher diet. She was competent because she acknowledged the error, but explained that the, she was too busy to deal with it. That's right, Letitia. People have other things to deal with other than you. you've lost that right, honey. You, you, we don't care. I mean, considering what you have done and then you have the audacity to turn around and then spew this crap to the people that are holding you responsible for what you've done is complete BS. We don't care. <laughs> the deputy even told her, if you don't like it, don't come to jail. <laughs> Uh, I love it. She said, this is not the first time she retaliated with comments such as these. In fact, she was also a deputy who ignored the violations that I listed in 2021. Deputies are our only means to correct ill while locked down for 21 to 22 hours a day. The following is next few non-compliances. No proteins for the kosher meals. Extremely low calorie. No kosher lunch and dinner. The most striking of the kosher violations from Trinity Foods was when they served sweet, which is processed meat, with non-kosher items in a plant around pork. They will claim that no pork touched the, the shmeat. <laughs> but the meal was a violation and contamination of non-kosher either way. This item has also been excluded from any kosher meals. Throughout this time, I was told that a Trinity employee named Tim said we are cutting back due to inflation. <laughs> and sometimes the food will be non-kosher. Eat it or buy commissary. <laughs> I just think it's insane that she thinks that they really care about this. Surely a judge is going to throw this out. So she goes on and on. This policy is ignored because there is a disregard to our customs and the jail's handbook. This forces inmates to alter their religious beliefs, not eat at all, or have excessive commissary spending when we are afforded three meals a day. Baby, you need to read the Bible is what you need to do. You need to stop writing all this shit, and you need to read the Bible and, and, and learn what really you need to be doing. Don't worry about the outside of that. Worry about the mental and the heart because you apparently lost in all that. Oh my gosh. I mean, am I wrong here, guys? I mean, don't you think right to a lot of things? It's just, I don't know. I think it's just crazy, but that's just me. That's just me. Don't want to offend anybody that has, but you know what? You have the right. You have the, you have the right to choose what you want it to choose. You also have the right to go elsewhere for lunch. You also have the right to go home and fix your own lunch. If you're that restricted on what you will eat, right? You have a restricted diet. I guess that's the proper way of saying it. A restricted diet. 
that's your right to have a restricted diet. You're out in the world and you haven't com committed a crime. Good, good for you. But when you've committed a horrible crime, any kind of crime, and you're in jail, I think you lose those rights. You, you don't get that dietary right. If it's for medical reasons, that's one thing. If it keeps, if it's a matter of keeping you alive, you're allergic to something, that's one thing. But if you're not, this is, all, to me, this is like special perks that someone's allowed to have in their daily life. But you know what? You can't have those special perks anymore because you killed a little boy. Okay, now she's saying medical neglect because she's got stomach issues. So she's saying, okay, if the if religious part doesn't work, I'm going to throw in the medical part. Just to, just to be sure. Because we know she likes to go around in circles and, you know, she always makes sure that she overstates everything. So just in case this kosher thing doesn't work, I'm going to tell you about the medical issues I'm having. So apparently she has IBS-C with symptoms present 12 or more days a month. Leaky gut, abdominal pain, 15 or more days a month, internal external bleeding, blood in stool, seven or more days a month, swelling beyond the normal range, the presence of knots in my stomach that one can feel and constant pelvic pain due to my stomach issues listed above. Maybe that's not what's causing it. Maybe the the reality of what you did to that little boy is coming into your head and that's what's causing all this. I explained that I experienced frequent times of not producing a bowel movement 10 to 15 days at a time. She's constipated. I have been prescribed Miralax, Cena, and the stool softener at various times. Below is a list of communication through the inmate kite system. The provider responded that I was at a 56% compli compliant rate. I explained to the med cart nurse, Jane Doe, <laughs> that the percentage was invalid because MedPass was consistently out of Miralax or uh, Cena due to the staff. Sometimes medical never showed and they counted the days I was out of custody in their responses, thus making the response invalid. My kite said, can I get different stomach meds since the provider refuses to evaluate me? And the response was a deflection as the provider responded with, please make sure you are placing requests in a professional manner. I was flabbergasted because the kite listed above was appropriate. So she goes on to write another page worth of stuff about what's going on with her constipation and stool. <sighs> Doesn't she know this stuff's going to get out? She just has, this woman has no cooth at all. And this is so stupid. I was at risk for bowel obstruction and long-term health risk. No help provided. I have sent grievance, spoke with several medical staff members to include, but not limited to, Heather, Daniel, Maggie, and several other Jane Does who hide their badges inside of clothing or who turn it around backwards from March 20th of August 2022. I informed SSGI's named Bryant someone named Simpson about the medical neglect. I was told to keep kiting and understand that staffing was low. The jail continues to ignore the negligence of contractor well faith. Therefore, being an active participant in the responsibility for the continued operation of constitu constitutional violation. Oh, now she got a concussion. Well, here we go. On another occasion, I requested a medical evaluation for a concussion. On J in July of 2022, I rolled off the top bunk and hit my head. I sliced it open and bruised my ribs. I alerted the ward deputy who called and emailed medical staff. I was told to put in a kite. Okay, so what is kite? I apologize, you guys. I did not realize this. Kite is a prison term for an informal message or a complaint. <clears throat> These are the symptoms that was told to medical staffing that continued. Nausea, bleeding, pain, headaches, vomiting, blurry vision for two days. Dizziness for two days. I still continue to have headaches, difficulty thinking clearly and remembering information. Yeah, we realized that. We, we found that out in your trial, Letitia, that you have difficulty remembering information. And we all know you don't think clearly. That was like from the get-go. We figured that part out. I was told to be patient and I was placed on a sick call multiple times. 
I have nightmares. Well, you've caused those. And a sleepwalking condition. I ex explained the continued issues and this was the second one in a year. I also asked for a bottom bunk restriction to prevent further head damage and how I was sure that I damaged my ribs as well. I also expressed my concerns for neglecting a head trauma for almost 30 days. She told me to kite mental health instead of instead because they handle those types of things. Once again, I received incompetent responses from an individual who is a licensed nurse hired by Wellfate. This was beyond a reasonable response time and are beyond negligent, as explained in the section involved in my stomach issues. Both issues are serious and risk potential further health issues or risk of harm. Individuals and organizations in the same situation outside of these defendants would know that without the proper medication, x-rays, etc., the symptoms will increase pain level will increase and would lead to more stomach gastrointestinal. So is it the stomach or is it your head, Leticia? So she's it's like she's showed they're showing deliberate indifference and negligence, blah, 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 blah. Dep deprivation of a basic human need that is serious. Do you know, you guys know that the jail deputies are so sick of this crazy woman. So she goes on and on and on. Abuse of power. It's the same stuff over and over again. Now she's just saying what each one did. In reference to all defendants, all other individuals or entities would adhere to these rights and or know their actions violate their rights. I'm going to have to look it up and see what happened with that. I really don't care, though. And why didn't I cover this trial? Because um, at the time that this trial was going on, the West trial for Orrin and Orson had already started and I was having to follow that audio daily to keep up with, with what was going on and then do a daily report back to everybody because the only way you could listen in on that trial was to go to the court's website and listen to the audio. You could not record it. You could not um, do a transcript of it or anything. You couldn't, we, we weren't allowed to be out there. So I kind of had to every day did a do a review of you know the witnesses and and what happened that day in court so that was a lot of work for a trial instead of just sitting here and streaming it right so that had already started and when Letitia's trial started there was a ton of other youtubers that were already starting to stream it um some big ones and so i was like you know what i'm not even gonna stream it they and i probably lost subs that way i don't know i you know like i love ikid mel if you guys have been to his channel I like watching him with trials because he he's funny. Um, so that's just why I didn't. We didn't do that one. There's a lot of stuff on here from her. I, I've gone over some of this already, though. That was her arrest affidavit. Okay, she's got this letter, which we've I've read one of them before already. This was the one to Judge Warner. Is this the one that I've already read? where she was complaining about her defense in February 21 of 2021. Conflict hearing info. She says, I had a very difficult morning mentally because I'm not mentally well. One of the main issues with my attorneys is their lack of ability to gather evidence. Due to this, I find little value in the term expert. First, they were unable to obtain my mental health records from Charleston, South Carolina, when I finally paid a firm in South Carolina to obtain them. In 2016, I was diagnosed with and received treatment before work for over 28 hours of care. The school district even provided extra services and later let me medically resign due to the ongoing reality breaks. Well, what you call reality breaks, they call unprofessional behavior. In 2018, I was hospitalized in Canada for two days and completed more treatment when I returned. 
I tell you this because it sets the stage for why I cannot work with my attorneys. I s sign release forms for them to get all this information so that they would have a better understanding of why I'm over, all over the place some days. I asked them to use the info from a non-biased doctor who worked with me more than two hours, but instead they sent a lady who was clearly an actress and friends with the DA. <laughs> she spoke about him in an unprofessional manner, her history and his election. And his election? Now, I'm sure all this was true, but I thought she worked for the court, not one particular side. My attorneys did this to make me look as perjurious, like a perjurious individual, a perjurious individual. Instead, it was it was mis malfeasance on their part. I have included several reasons to support my claim as I kept timeline of these conflicts. She's I mean, it's just like Darrell. It's like she thinks she knows better than her own attorneys or. One of her complaints was that um, her attorneys were texting her family and giving them info that they should not have, causing several disputes. <laughs> Leticia, you dug this hole, honey. You did this. Not your attorneys. And then she says they overlooked the company statute about video recording. Oh, so she had to... <laughs> she said... This happens often with evidence in which me, the non-expert, has to provide corrections to evidence. <laughs> oh, now she got something up with the judge. They filed that motion knowing this county would not grant me a new attorneys to sabotage my chances of a trial by judge. <laughs> they knew I wanted to present evidence to him without exposing any info on my son's father. However, they created incorrect conflicts instead of addressing the real issues. They could have filed the pro se only instead of talking about my defense to sabotage my trial by judge. Indeed, I am innocent, but I will not put myself or others in danger running the defense against my biological son when the system is letting two men run free who are involved one is a prominent member of the independent business they use the ngri to get a hearing knowing i'm not guilty to cover up their lack of representation also i had bouts of insanity and still do i didn't i did not murder or abuse anyone nor would that be a defense because it's my understanding that you actually did do it however i will protect my bio son and i will protect the drugs and violence documented from my stepson I wonder which one of our personalities was writing this. The truth is the court is holding the wrong person and for the wrong crimes. This whole process has been nefarious from denying me an attorney, threatening me in the bathroom, away from cameras to confess, taking advantage of me being delusional, threatening my other kids freedom or else, etc. I'm going to keep making it known, sir, just how much the state has done in this wrongful incarceration. I will continue to be an advocate for myself because I am not a murderer. And the level that the prosecution goes through to promote a wrongful conviction is absurd. Truth is, they could see a video from someone else and they would dismiss that person as a lunatic. They have far too much invested in this wrongful incarceration to admit that they were wrong. For these reasons, and because my defense team is in cahoots with them. Oh, they in cahoots. Oh, okay. All right, Leticia. I am left with no other choice but to represent myself. Denying me my rights under the Constitution has happened throughout this process from the detectives, the jailer, and now my legal team. Every day I get, I'm getting worse mentally due to inadequate representation and being held hostage for a crime I did not commit. These are my conflict issues and my reason for asking to go pro se. As always, thank you for your time. Leticia Stauk. This bitch is crazy. Yeah. Okay. So I'm. That's all for her today. That's all we're gonna do on her today. She's. She is on my last nerve. If you guys are interested in this subject, obviously you're watching this video to this point. Um, if I have covered something that you've already seen elsewhere or that's old news, I apologize. I was not on this trial from the beginning. Um, I only did p bits and pieces of it. So this was new to me. I think. For the most part, I know that I had done a letter from uh, the peanut butter letter. Remember the peanut butter letter? I've done a couple of letters that she did back in the day, but that that I just read, I think, was new documents to me. So um, maybe 
just like I enjoyed them, someone here else will, someone else here will also enjoy them. <sighs> that being said, I think we'll close this one out for now. I want to thank you guys for watching. I want to thank you for always being here. My true subscribers, my, my, uh, diehards, my, my channel members. I love you guys. Be safe. Have a great week and I will talk to you soon.